The Yellow Brick Road. This video does not reflect the actual views of real people. These are actors playing a role to entertain audiences. No persons or animals were harmed in the making of this video. Gosh, I love YouTube and I love Google. Now they go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I'm just gonna steal everybody else's intro. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Ruby uh, and death cults are the topic of discussion today. <laughs> Ryan Dawson. I could hear the nihilism in your voice. Mm. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, a uh, cage fighting coach and a cage fighting commentator for some reason talking about scientific philosophy. You're welcome for sending you this video at 2 a.m. Thank you. You're welcome. Three nothing. Now, I'm partially frustrated because I wanted to become rich and famous enough to put Joe Rogan in, in the hot seat. Well, we can still do it. And this is what, how we're going to do it. Because you can say it wasn't complete. All we got to do is this. UFC commentary, you know, boof. We go to an event somewhere in Brooklyn, possibly maybe New York. Who knows? Maybe Jersey. Or Detroit. It doesn't matter. We uh, pat ourselves, you know, so that way if we were hit with his uh, roundhouse kick or a spinning back kick, we will survive. <laughs> we use uh, weapons. I'm not going to say what. Right gear. Shit like that. Yeah. Kidnap him. Tell him about the channel. Don't say it's you, though. Say, I was watching this channel, and they basically have it down. And this is what I'm going to tell you right now. And you can go off. And then when we're done, we'll throw them back down in the street and then get in our uh, black van with uh, no windows, tinted, front view and you know, side, view, side mirrors, and drive off. Yeah. I think you explained your plan a little bit too out loud. You should have muted the... <laughs> Here's the thing with Rogan. Yeah. Uh, I've been a fan of Rogan's podcast for three years. Almost around the time he like just started doing it. And probably over the past like couple of years, he has like these Strictly scientific minds on. Well, I might even throw Peterson in there because Peterson didn't talk about many stuff like stuff outside of men are men and women are women type stuff when they're arguing the pronoun game and all that shit. Well, it's it's becoming uh, expected. Yeah, like he's gonna have these type of guys on, and that's okay. It's what he likes, but. In my mind, what I see, it seems like he just eats all of it, all of it up. Really? Like, just accepts it. Being complacent? Accepts it as it is, as they say it. Like, oh, really? Okay, cool. Or maybe he's, like, you know, he's staying within the sandbox, his own sandbox, which where he, uh, he plays with everybody he wants to play with because he's familiar with the sandbox rather than going into the jungle gym. Yeah, well, they're... There's simple answers for him. Obviously, the scientists do all the experiments and studies and shit. Theories. Yeah, but for him, it's just in a nice, neat, you know, napkin folded and everything, mm. to where you can just accept their word for it and their explanation for it, and then reiterate it. <laughs> The other one was off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. OCD. Alright, so 
We're only gonna watch like a snippet of this. Were we watching? And we'll come back to it. Hmm? We're watching what? We're watching Joe Rogan. Frost Ahavi smacks down liberal bunny bitch Joe Rogan in epic tirade. That's what we're watching. No, I'm just kidding. Exactly. I love those titles. Why is that there? Bill Maher cries in <laughs> disgust as uh, Jon Stewart triumphs over him, stands out over him in his dead, dead lifeless body. Ha <laughs> ha. All caps. <laughs> Uh, 500,000 views. So I, I believe this starts with uh, Frost Hobby saying that science is woo woo itself. Woo woo meaning. Ric Flair. Yeah. Clearly. Some uh, abstract idea or creation that uh, has no, uh, no true evidence behind it factual evidence behind it you can call them pillars well pillars as far as okay <laughs> okay that's not going down <laughs> that pillar's not breaking so let's hear them discuss it that was kind of a quack I yeah. did it and I was like alright yeah. okay. once they start talking about toxins you know, we're cleansing you of toxins. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I know what see, he's that's doing. a narrative. Yeah. It's possible. He knew it's But it's not proof. <laughs> right. It's just a possible story you tell yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Rogan's like, oh, fuck. I didn't think that was going to go there. Go back. He's like, wait, it's possible? You what? go back, you can see his eyebrow raise. He's like, ah, what? Ready? Wait, wait. Let's all, let's all establish right now that Frost Ahabi is a genius and he's a marketing uh, marketing king. You see, he knew. He knew that. <laughs> he knew his Reebok symbol would be right there over his heart. Isn't that uh, funny? We own you. You know, I don't think I've ever seen any any like symbol that was over here. It's always look, uh, look at this. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> they own me. Yeah. Anyway, it's another conspiracy. But go ahead. That was kind of a quiet. His face. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, right, I got yeah. this guy. They, once they start talking about toxins, <laughs> you know, we're cleansing you of toxins. <laughs> like, oh, okay, see, that's a narrative. Yeah. It's possible, but it's not proven. Right. It's just a possible story. To tell <laughs> yeah, but that term, right. toxins, right. is so... That, that is like... There's certain things that people say when you, you know the, you're dealing with woo. Office space. Oh, this is some... They have some office space? Yeah. <sighs> right. Listen, if you can just give me this a report by the end of the day, but it's not my job, it'll be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Wait, Rogan said it in like this condescending like smug way yeah assuming that well he's smart so he knows that this is the, that science is the right answer yeah. so he's gonna agree with me after I mock these other people here he's gonna be like ha, yeah yeah you're right and then he's like uh, what it's possible you see, you see Frost have going like this he's like Frost is like it's a narrative he's like yeah 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 but it's possible what that's right right but you see <laughs> I got it. Fuck, I gotta start it over almost. Alright. You can see him smirking. He's like, no more false starts. That you know. was kind of a quack. Yeah. And I was like, alright, yeah. he did Once they start talking about <laughs> toxins, you know, we're cleansing you of toxins. <laughs> like, oh. Again, see, that's a narrative. Yeah. It's possible, but it's not proven. Right. It's just a possible story you can tell yourself. Yeah, but that term, toxins, right. is so. that That is like. There's certain things that people say where you know you're dealing with woo. Oh, this is some woo-woo bullshit here. And toxins is one of them. Cleansing and toxins. I'm going on a cleanse. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm getting the toxins out of my system. Dude, scientists are just as guilty as, of woo as every other guy. You think so? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's begun. <laughs> it has begun. I suddenly want a Reebok shirt now. <laughs> so, he makes a statement, which probably to a lot of people sounds outlandish. What? That science is woo-woo too. Well, as soon as I heard him say that, like at fucking 2, at 1.30 a.m., I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, this whole like segment here, this video that we that's uh, playing, is like an hour and five minutes long. I was hoping, yeah. I was hoping. But I was like, 
I was watching. I'm like, at some point, it's gonna become uninteresting again. Or uninteresting. It did. Did for me. It kept for me. Yeah, I had to watch. Uh, I had to watch the entire thing. I sent it to you. I was hoping maybe you could get some because like, maybe maybe. Oh, there's a bunch of shit. Then you're like, here, let's man. do a video. I'm like, exactly what. There's a bunch of shit in here. Alright. So, here's the results of Faraz Sahabi saying science is woo woo too. To the whiny liberal Joe Rogan. To that whiny globalist leftist. Freak show! Puppet! I won't sell my soul! <laughs> you won't get me! I'm from Texas! Right. Joe Rogan's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, but he, uh, he, he says, I'm wrong! Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> it's like, damn, dude. Right. He slapped himself in the face like Clay Guida, man. No, no, no. Right. My bad. Uh, he let someone else slap him. Uh, BJ Penn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. After he beats the fuck out of someone. <laughs> Fucking, he's like, okay, guys, he has a cure for AIDS somewhere. Uh-huh. Only him. It's like, shoot me up. Yeah. Hurry. Procrastination. In, that, so in what way? Oh, Procrastinating? God, no. Like, there's, there's scientists, then there's philosophers of science. Mm-hmm. There's so much woo in science. Even the most popular guys have woo. They just never studied the philosophy of science, so they don't really understand what they're saying, per se. Like, give me an example of woo woo in I'll, science. I'll give, you, I'll give you a great example. Okay. Okay. Um, there's this guy named Isaac Newton. Okay? I heard of that dude. Yeah, and you're asking him, hey, Isaac, why don't I fall off the face of the earth? And he's going to be like, well, Joe, there's this gravity. There's this force of gravity pulling you down to the earth. The earth has a greater mass than you. Therefore, it's, there's this force pulling you down. We call it gravity. And then some guy comes around. His name is Zahabi. He tells you, no, Joe, don't listen to that guy. I have another theory, way more uh, it's truer than his. I believe there are gremlins pulling you down to the earth. They have lassos, these infinite long lassos. And every time you're falling off the earth, they pull you. Every time you jump up and down on the earth, they pull you back down to the earth. You don't see these gremlins, they're invisible, but that's what's pulling you down to the earth. Now, how do you know who's right and who's wrong? Who's telling you the truth, me or Isaac? See, I knew, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you. That one day, we were working out, we are doing uh, box jumps. I saw them. They fucked up. I saw it. I saw something <laughs> furry doing this. So... I, I like the analogy right when I heard it, you know? It's like, oh, good, good. Two this is, theories. This Ooh. is the same as that fucking genetics affecting your IQ shit. Yeah. You take a result you get, an observation you make. It's like, hmm, uh, this race scores, this score on, on average with this test. Mm-hmm. And... And then they make an entire scientific theory around that observation. It's like they're starting, like you get a, that is not even a good analogy. I was gonna say like a puzzle box with puzzle pieces. You get to look at the picture and then and you can place your pieces where you, so it makes sense and shit. It's basically, it's basically filling in Filling in these blank spaces with information you want to see, basically. Think like this. I want there to be a force of gravity. I can observe a force of gravity. It's your coloring book. I don't know how to really observe, or I don't know how to explain it, but I'll find whatever answers can fit into this puzzle that can explain it. It's your coloring book, man. What do you mean by that? <laughs> The sun's out. It's a, it's a sunny day, colorful. Warm colors. <laughs> what do you mean? They fit. Yeah. It's, uh. You can almost. The sky's blue, baby blue. <laughs> no clouds today. You can almost correlate it with superstition. Right? A baseball player eats the same, whatever, cheeseburger every day before a game. <laughs> Then he gets diabetes. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Every time he does it, he throws a perfect game. So now, he's going to shapeshift rea- reality in order to fit that narrative. Uh-huh. Now, cheeseburgers are magic. So is his colon. <laughs> and then if evidence <laughs> breaks it down, let's say, let's say the guy that's starting the day before him, 
He's like, I ate the same cheeseburger. No, I didn't throw a perfect game. Quiet. He's like, okay. That just, then he uses that evidence and yeah. says, well, I'm magical. I'm magical when I eat this cheeseburger. You're just a bitch. It doesn't work for you. <laughs> and you can make a whole reality out of it. You can say, yeah. it's like it, a, my yeah. genetics, when they, when they come together with this cheeseburger, I can throw perfect games. You don't have the same genetics like I do. And you're a pussy, so. <laughs> a Verlander and Taco Bell? I'm like, oh. You ever heard about that? No. Nah. Dude eats Taco Bell, like a shitload of Taco Bell. Allegedly. He said it on the show. I don't know if he Fake still does meat. it. Yeah. It was cheese. The dildos of meat. I'm not going farther than that. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I don't know how they cook it. I don't know what they do. Whatever. Anyway. All I'm saying is, you know, it's like, boy, Justin, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Why does he get his own bathroom, son? You, you'll know when you win 20 games, don't worry. This bathroom is like like one section corned off, quarantined. Alright guys, I gave you I gave you my whole body, literally. Ugh. <laughs> I hope he uses mild sauce and not the spicy <laughs> one. Spicy's where it's at, man. Alright, let's keep going. Well... Isaac lived a long time ago before they actually had provable Wait. studies that could show you why gravity works. Maybe one of provable studies. It's proven. Listen. There's uh, two things there that are red yeah. flags to yeah. me. Go ahead. Get him. I'll say the one that you weren't that you weren't about to say. Oh, I weren't? That you wasn't. Whatever. You wasn't. What was I gonna say? You don't know. Can you prove it? You don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. You're gonna go off the proven thing. That was the first stop. I was, I'll go off of the. Uh, the fuck did you just say? The. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's not so hot now, huh? That it happened a long time ago <laughs> thing. Yeah. Theoretically, that has no bearing on anything. So that's just a non-statement. Mm. <laughs> it happened. That that just means that Listen. time is the dictator of an whatever intelligence. Listen, they didn't have laces. <laughs> we have phones. Now in your head, logically, it's like, oh, all right, that sort of makes sense. They didn't have the ability to, they, they have a lot of, with uh, microscopes and whatever the fuck, instruments. That logically makes sense. But real, in reality, that, that, that does not work. It doesn't work. Because someone could have just closed their eyes and scribble scrabbled numbers and letters and shit on a board and came out with some like came out with the equation to a guest. Yeah. Mm. That could have happened too. Mm. Theoretically. Sure. I could make this thing f I could make it by accident. It's possible. Yeah. So just like uh what do you say, proven what? It's been proven? It's been a proven theory now okay. because they have the instruments to measure. You can't prove a theory. As far as based off of um, probability. You can, well, what are you saying? Prove a hypothesis. Okay. I believe there's a force of gravity. And then you go through all the experiments mm -hmm. and equations and all that shit to say, I just, I, this is the proof. Maybe I, maybe I said that wrong. hypothesis maybe is, I said that wrong. is true. Uh, no, you can't. You can say it's the most probable. Yes. Which is why I'll, I'll always go back, because I believe it's very easy uh, and simple to understand the whole, uh, as far as percentage. Like 99, 99%, uh, how do I say this? I could say someone's most likely to do something and they're 99%, you know, most likely to do it. There's always that 1%. That doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it an absolute. That's why you can't, can't say it's proven. You can say, based off of what I have here, I believe it's most likely, based off my theory. You can't say, oh, it's going to happen. It's true, bro. Yeah. Now we're distorting reality, and now, we're, uh, and now we don't have a, we obviously don't have a clear uh, understanding of truth as far as a whole, because now, now we're saying it's a fact. What's a fact? You know? Not to mention all the, you could say, putting the theories and hypothesis, hypotheses in a vacuum as in you eliminate the rest of reality and mm -hmm. you say in this vacuum 
this thing, sure. this object will fall at this rate. Which is why I, I understand him. I immediately understood him from, I mean, from what I heard as far as it becomes a belief system. Yeah. It becomes woo-woo. It, instead of science, instead of like kind of like the the spirit of like prob- probably the rule. And what I mean by that is like, we'll come up with these theories and we'll come up with probabilities. And immediately when I come up, when I come up with this theory, someone should try to disprove this. And it's interesting. We'll keep doing this based off of whatever. Uh-huh. With whatever. And there's people out there that um, mix mix it up. I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's intentional. And it could be both or just ignorance. They, 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 it's like they, there's a washer and they put in like truth and they put in a belief and they, it's the same thing. It's like, no, it's not. They're two <laughs> totally different things. It could be because they haven't stumbled upon anything or probably, I wouldn't say maybe. stumbled, but I haven't when, found anything that's actually and true. And whether it's semantics or not, you know, it's important whenever someone says uh, fact or proven or truth, it's important, you know? Yeah. Cause yeah, people live through that as an ideology sure which is it, beca- why, it becomes a fucking religion and yeah I was about to say, that's why people compared like it dogmatic is. Fun- dogmatic sign. fundamentalists yeah. you know think about it it's like it's basically a belief and they believe it to be like well I believe it to be true like does it that doesn't make sense mm-hmm. when you think about it if you break down what they mean you could say okay we establish this as a truth and this is and this is what's known you know this and I know this about myself. We established that. It's an absolute. You don't know this, which means you believe. Yeah. You believe it to be most likely. You don't know. It's not an absolute. It's not a fact. Mm-hmm. You know your favorite color based off of your selection. That's, yeah. that's yeah, that's creativity. Yeah. Then there's... That is a truth. There's... What do I think about... The Dark Knight Batman, mm-hmm. and then there's the actual writer. That in his mind, his written character, that is who Batman is. Yeah. Within his little universe. Just like the, I'm not gonna go into it. You know, you know where I'm going. What? You know where I was going with Batman. Poor character of the new Batman. Ah. For another time. Anyway. Bad flick. It's not his fault. Right. Yeah. Are those studies? Well, I'm not a scientist. Well, no. Sci- let me let me break it to you this way. No scientist has a study to prove us that gravity works. Really? That's that's the whole thing. That's that's what's scary about but how we un- talk about the universe. But they us. understand that gravity is in relation to the size and mass of objects. So the moon is smaller, therefore it has one six Earth's gravity because it's one quarter the size of the Earth. Very There's true. a standard formula that they true. can follow. There's a correlation. A form. Yeah. Correlation. Yeah. Exactly. A theory, based off of math, measurements, etc. You know, things that we created to give us the most likely. You know, we believe this to be close, the closest to the, what it really is. The answer. We don't know it though. Yeah. But they understand. Like no, like. See, later on in this, for us, goes where I would want to go. Like if someone actually was willing to debate me. We'd probably be somewhere on a similar level where they're talking right now. Just talking about the logical implications of when you say proof and things like that. You say when you say something's a truth in science or whatever. But I would eventually want to go to the observer, the person who's observing these things. It's like, it's like how do you know this isn't misshaping things? Like when someone says, like, well, what's an inch? They grab a fucking tape measure and say, "Here, here's an inch." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we made that up, right? Exactly. That's questioning the observer themselves. Mm-hmm. We created this measure of unit. Now let's, now let's say, is this inch? I bring out another tape. Yeah, uh, tape is the same exact. Are these the same exact thing? Yeah. Like, how can you measure that to where they're the exact same thing? It's some. It's it's an estimate of what an inch is. You know. You say, oh well, we have precision machines that make the same thing every time like well you made the machine yeah there we go how is your precision of making the precision and it goes on and on and on yeah. and it, that's like, where it, you have to it's, go it's a weird theory that there's like some way there's an absolute like totem pole this is what an inch is this is what a foot is this is what yards are this is this equation this formula etc you know these are the absolutes that's why it's like and 
in a way, it's like, as far as our, our comprehension, it's still, we created these things. They and weren't here before us. That's why I like putting an emphasis on critiquing the Sam Harris's, the Richard Dawkins, those type those of guys. Those <laughs> Because they're not even questioning the observer I don't mean to insult them. Yeah, I'm just yeah. kidding. They throw parts of reality away in order to well, it, put their idea the in thing, a vacuum and say, this well, is right. The like, thing well, you get, created yeah. the fucking standards in the first sure. place. The and th- Stephen Pinker. The thing I would get at is, uh, is whether it's intentionally or inten- unintentionally. You know? This is why I would get at, even though it's, it's different, but it's the same. It's, um, I'm, I'm getting rid of this and distorting reality, reality to elevate my theory and to call it the truth, which is, uh, it's like when I hear like Jones. Yeah, well, 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 it's it really you should add a part to that to say. It could be the physical truth, but you won't know it. Yeah, you can say this is probably yeah what's going and you on. You could be right, but you can't say I know this yeah. is what's going on unless it's, you are that thing. Yeah, which you're not. So. You are, but you're not. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it's like when Jones, and he dances around. It's like, let's say Jones, Alex Jones talking about like a, an issue and regarding something. You know? mm-hmm. and, it evol- and it revolves uh, Israel. And I'm not going to go into that. But let's say he just kind of dances around Israel, does not mention it until he's forced to. And when he does, it's not accurate as what most likely makes more, the most sense. You know, Cognitive dissonance. That's it. So... When I see that happen, it's like, okay, either, either you're ignorant or you're, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corrupt. The, yeah. the cognitive dissonance would be the ignorance part. It's going crazy. He's like, ah! Ah! <laughs> Who's in my house? Ah! <laughs> um, yeah, and by corrupt, you know, I don't mean like... <laughs> and it could be that. It could be, uh... Well... I'm supporting my interest and I know what I'm doing versus I had no fucking idea. Uh, you know? Ignorance. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they both... Like, when he's saying that, he doesn't mean, like, this black and white, corrupt or ignorant. Those mm-hmm. things branch off into a, a billion different things. They do, things. but it's still... Corruption could be a payday. Corruption could be a... It's still the issue my of... Ide- sure. ideology to thrive. Sure, but it's still either or. They just branch off into a yeah. billion... But when I say it's it's changed, it's not so black and white. I'm like, yeah, in a way, if we're just gonna stay on this level, it is. Now I say 100% we, we, we could go. We could, well, I meant as far as to why, and that's different. To why someone would do that? All that falls right into that black and well, white yes, area. I meant the, the the reason as far as to why, not is he ignorant I, or corrupt. I say it's black and white. Okay, this is what I mean. As far as the, like, I'm not saying the reason why it's whether it's ignorance or corruption. I mean, like, they're to what or why. I could, I could tell you, like, um, give me an example of that. Um, Wesley kidnapping Angel's baby. Okay. It's black and white. I'm sure it is. I just mean like. I use this metaphor because a lot of times people say like something like with uh, I meant the morality, billion, all the billion other shit, you know. Yeah, well, when people say something about morality in the world, they say like, "Oh, you know, it's, it's a gray world. Not everything's black and white." I'm like, and I'll just take that metaphor <laughs> and use that. Like, well, gray is just a culmination of black and white. Yeah. All my, you have to zoom in and look at each little detail of black and white. Guess what I meant. Yeah, those are those are the little decisions that here and there that are splitting off into black and white. That's what I mean. I didn't mean like when you root it back, it's black and white. I didn't mean that. Yeah. All right, so not to Joe Rogan. Well, we're not. What do you call it? We're not branching off. Well, uh, we, no, well, we no, we're not because it's related. So there is a central point that I'll speak more for myself here and say I'm constantly arguing about, and everything else is just revolving around that. So if I let's say I debated someone later on, yeah. I would bring up By force. something today. <laughs> I would bring up something today. I'd be like, "Oh, I can see this idea here in orbit. I'll pull that to the center and argue from there." Meaning, you'll see some lady with her child, you know, 
in a fucking like baby carriage or whatever. <laughs> you have your child back if you, if you answer this question for me. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do Fight Club. I tried that. The the Asian dude where he has a gun to the bag is that? Yeah. Yeah, I convinced someone I actually had a flight club. Will you down? It's tomorrow night. I gave him an address. Should have got like fake bruises or something. <laughs> Put up with like play doh or something. Like that. Oh, I got a mouse here. <laughs> play doh. Ew. Yeah, whatever. All right. Now my my theory of gremlins, which obviously I don't believe it, right? I'm using right. mythological right. language. To make it really simple, don't somebody misquote me that I'm doing right now. Frost, I don't believe in gravity. You don't just believe in gravity. He's a gravity denier. Exactly. Well, uh -huh. I have. There's less. There's less mass on. There's less atoms. The moon has less atoms, therefore less gremlins, less than Polo. Mm -hmm. My my gremlin, gremlin theory correlates with the, the gravity theory exactly. But I'm using a myth, mythical language just to point out that every type of force we're talking about is an inference. It's something we project out there. We don't actually see gravity. And you know, later on, Einstein debunked gravity, right? When, well, well, what do you mean by he debunked, he debunked gravity? It, but he, Isaac was totally wrong. Isaac, what, Isaac's what explanation of why you don't fall off the earth was totally wrong. Mm. Well, what did Einstein do to debunk it? Einstein taught us that a new theory, a new hypothesis, that gravity is a pushing force, not a pulling force. See, Isaac Newton, he debunked Aristotle. Uh, first, we used to believe what Aristotle used to say. Aristotle used to say, look, this thing has a, a natural place. It has to be stuck to the earth. That's its natural place. It, the force is within that one thing. That's why it doesn't fall off the earth. So uh, uh, when Aristotle saw a bird fly, he said, look, it has levity. Its natural state is to be in the air. The force that carries it up in the air is within it. It's within the bird itself. Mm -hmm. Isaac Newton came around and said, no, that's totally wrong. Nobody, no, no entity can move itself. It's only a force that's applied. So let's say you're walking. Isaac Newton would say, you're not pushing yourself forward. You're pushing the ground beneath you backwards. And that, the ground is pushing you forwards. So that every action is the opposite equal reaction. Mm. So when I run, I'm really pushing the ground behind me. It sounds like, like he split. I just, just wanted to say, every, like when I was listening to this, I wasn't watching them. So every now and then, like he he would like he has these moments where he's perfectly quiet in between what he says. <laughs> I'm like, is it still going? Then he talks again. It's like, oh, okay. I think he mixed the names up there. Maybe. I think he meant to say Einstein and he said Newton instead. Maybe. Because New or uh, Einstein's the uh, relativity. Theory of relativity. Yeah, that's it. Newton's. Uh, it means you're in gravity. Theory. <laughs> <laughs> but. My study says you're on fair to earth. That's a whatever mistake. Better work on those athletics, young man. <laughs> those are, that's where you'll shine. But he's saying all this to say that, all right, some really smart dude comes up with this theory mm -hmm. and idea, and he's like, and he finds around all the surrounding stuff to say I have evidence for it. Mm -hmm. But then later on, someone else surpasses him with a better, more improved idea mm -hmm. of whatever gravity. Theory. Yeah. And then someone overtops them. And that's what, that's the way it's meant to be, though. Yes. 100%. It's when we establish these as truths and facts and knowns. It's like, like you can say, oh, I, I, know he, I know his theory. I know his theory's true. No. No, you don't. He also, I don't it know. Isn't. It, it isn't to begin with anyway. So. I don't know if he's trying to argue from the central point of uh, the central that these narratives can be explained in a bunch of different ways like even certain things in religion might explain some scientific things uh, scientific yeah. things might explain some religious things because he mentioned uh, I just use mythological language as in explaining things through in a way like metaphor almost. Explaining a type of reality through metaphor rather than, you know, one times X minus the speed of light squared. See, based off of that, I've come to my conclusion. Which I wouldn't want to do, but. No, we have all come to a conclusion based off of that, uh, <laughs> that formula right there that. More gremlins. 
that and you're gay. That's why you, you elevate high in the air. They're a little confused. Like, this one's gay. Hmm. <laughs> Let them high up in the air a little bit. They give you some slack on the rope. <laughs> As usual. Trust me. It's true. It's true. Later in this video, he steals my can you be born gay and cheese idea. Really? No. He steals it. Don't say it. <laughs> Not yet. All right. When we come, when we do Maybe I'll use the clip as, right. as a part of the yeah, sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They don't, they don't need to know. It's like, oh, for us, a hobby? He's rich and famous. I'll listen to him. I, random, could, I could pull off being him. Random black dude? It's like, you need for us a hobby in your video. <laughs> I could pull off being him in a video. Tan. 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 Hey, July, I'm telling you, four weeks, I'll be outside. Smaller head. Hey. Accent. And pouring yourself out for Reebok. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, my, that's where my heart is, right? <laughs> you ever notice that? Really, I'm not kidding. We'll take a little break here. Why are they all here? What's going on? They had a choice. Well, it's in the center sometimes. It's like, please, please. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking, what's it called? Uh, what's that shit everyone liked? Uh, shirts? Expensive as fuck. It wasn't a sports shirt. It was just... Uh, Polos? Polos, that's it. <laughs> They're here too. It's like, we own you. Put our crust in your heart. Yes. Pour your soul and paycheck out to us. I would say that's a marketing scheme. I'm just scheme. kidding. I'm kidding, yeah. No, I mean, the placement thing? Oh, maybe. That's more... Uh, well, let's not, let's that not air, I would say this is more looked at... Probably. That's uh, yeah. Look at your tit. Exactly. Yeah, he's he's no, he's found. clean. He's saying you're pushing the earth behind you, and the earth is pushing you forward. There's a reaction there. So what they do to, to illustrate that to kids is they take like a train track, they elevate it, and they turn on the train. And then you see the train track starting to spin underneath the train. And it's showing you, look, the train is pushing the train tracks back. And the train tracks are pushing the train forward when they're, when they're connected to the ground. So when I put you on a treadmill, you're pushing the treadmill behind you. The treadmill's not pushing you forward because it's, it's spinning along with you. Mm -hmm. But if I put you on the ground, the ground is pushing you forward now. So for every action, there's obviously an equal reaction. I'm sure you've heard this. Mm -hmm. Then Einstein comes along and says, no, that's totally wrong. Well, he, uh, when it comes to gravity, okay, when the subject of gravity, he says, because Isaac Newton says this, look, he says, look, the force of gravity is in the earth. The earth has this invisible force, this mm -hmm. magical woo-woo thing. And that's what, that's what his contemporaries said about him. That's what his peers said. He said, oh, you're... You're appealing to magic. What is this gravity thing? Where it's non it's non corporeal, it's not material, it's not made of a substance. Is this magic? And he was like, Yeah, it's this force, you can't feel it, you can't detect it, it's just observable in the, in nature. I immediately decided to send it to you when I heard him say, Every every uh, action has an opposite or equal what was it? Reaction. Yeah. I was like, Must send, he must be awake. Why that part? Hmm? Why that I was going to send you. I was going to send you regardless. That I'm like, what, what about that part? Spark something. You said it. Ah, yeah. I tried to. Oh, I was. I was already going to send it to you, but then when he said it, I just like it like jogged my memory. It's like, like if he talked about someone being a bitch, and I'm like, oh, Jordan. Oh, <laughs> I'll send it. To <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, I use that idea all the time with baseball players. Like, oh, like when you throw a, a ball at a wall. Mm. Yes. The, like the ricochet back yeah. I don't know not the ricochet just the force of the ball hitting the wall mm -hmm. like yes the ball and you applied a force into the wall yeah. but the wall's also pushing you back too at the same yeah. time so but my study says if you're a homosexual the ball will propel ten times more back it's an invisible study you can't see ah. And for 300 years, everybody believed that. And then Einstein comes along and says, no, you guys are totally wrong. There is no mythical force called gravity. It's a pushing force. So really what he says is, oops, sorry. I mean, let me get a sheet of paper here. Make it really, really simple. And I'm going to put it in a nutshell here, okay? But okay. this is, he says, look, Einstein says, look, space and time are one. Space is actually a thing out there. It's actually a physical, the space between me and you is an actual physical thing. He says the sun is so heavy that it dents it. It makes, a dent. it makes like a toilet bowl. And the earth is bumping around in that toilet bowl because space is actually curved. It's curved. 
He just called us a turd. He called Earth a turd, basically. Lately, lately I've been... I can hear what you're saying from taxes. We're not shit. I'll have guns. I'll bend my universe. (laughs) I'm not a toilet bowl. You are. I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I'm coming. <laughs> no, it's... Don't, don't wait. Don't wait, Alex. I'm here. Drum! <laughs> like this, space is mm-hmm. curved. Because the sun, imagine I put something, a bowling ball in your bed. You, you, your bed's going to indent. Right. That, bowl, that toilet bowl shape... The, the, the earth is flowing around that pulling force, so it's a pushing force, no longer a pulling force. So the weight of the earth is pushing down on space. Exactly, it's bending space, literally. Its mass is bending space. Now Isaac Newton thought light travels in a straight line only. And to prove this, Einstein said, look, light will bend. If I'm right, light will bend. So they observed the sun during an eclipse and they saw that the light bends. Light does not travel in a straight line. This is another um, uh, belief that was debunked. I mean, how many scientific beliefs are debunked? Countless or, or overturned. Because a scientific fact is not a mathematical fact. They're two different things. A scientific fact can never go higher than hypothesis. If somebody understands the philosophy of science, he understands that every single scientific fact is not equivalent to a mathematical fact. One plus one equals two. A scientific fact is always subject to cross-examination and new evidence. Well, have you ever heard of Thomas Kuhn? Mm-hmm. He's very famous for that, right? We have a paradigm. So during Aristotle's time, he had a paradigm. He thought the sun goes around the earth. It was an observational scientific fact. Every day he saw the sun go around the earth, literally. He said, look guys, I'm using my senses to observe the sun go around the earth. And then one day we find out, no, that's an optical illusion. It's not true that the sun goes around the earth. As the earth goes around the sun. Scientific, scientific revolution. Every scientific fact we have, or theory, including gravity, because gravity became the law of gravity. It was no longer the theory of gravity. It was so accepted, it became the law of gravity. Today, we don't, we don't understand gravity as Einstein understood it. Excuse me, as Isaac Newton understood it. We understand it completely backwards, literally backwards now. And that's true with every scientific theory, because science is always subject to new evidence coming to light. Or, but... See, that's one. These Ugh. are moments when I wish I was rich and famous to just explain that. I'm telling you, just get a gun <laughs> uh, and a bandana and just start sprinting at nighttime. If I ever became a fighter, I know which trainer I'm looking for. Duke Rufus? I'm going to Canada. <laughs> no, no. That's what you gotta do. You gotta go Duke Rufus. We gotta, you gotta go Rufus Sport. Join Tyron Woodley on TMZ. <laughs> And then you could say, Kanye's wrong. I know why. I only said that so you'd pay attention to me. Ready? <laughs> Just beat. You, we gotta do it. You gotta fight GSP. Destroy him. Right? What you're gonna do is you're not gonna let him touch you for the first three rounds. And then go like, Hey George, listen. Do you believe? Do you believe, do you believe in God? Bah, bah, bah. He believes in aliens. What if I told you that I'm God? <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Ah! <laughs> Frost hops like, who is this man? Listen, Frost. Steal his essence, steal his money. Yeah. See, I've been waiting for <laughs> I don't. I'm kidding. I don't know if do that. If we, ever, if we ever become like well known, they'll say, see, he said it right here. He steals his essence, steals his soul. They weren't kidding. They were saying it so that, uh, that way in the new world they could say they said it. There's yeah. like there's With, like years. Yeah. There's like years between where Rogan has guests that say stuff like this. Yeah. I can think of uh, What's his name that you were being such an asshole that you won't say anything to me? Like you wouldn't you wouldn't say his name. Rupert Sheldrick is one. No. Uh, you don't know. Oh, he can't be a guest. He's dead. Oh no, my fault. Uh and Mick Goswami's one. That is that him? He's the quantum physicist. That's that's the guy. He's the one who was saying the mind is not located. Okay, okay, that's what, that's why it's I meant. not located. That's why I meant. My fault. That's why I meant. Yeah. yeah, it's like 
and then this guy wasn't even for us Abu wasn't meant to be anything that they're talking about it's supposed just, to be just a, completely random I think the, the Name Ooh. of the episode is uh, my fault. Random. <laughs> the name of the episode is MMA, right? Yeah, the MMA, MMA hour. Yeah, it's so, like little. Did he know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I think that yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's a good time around right here. I mean, it says, it says, it says, it says we'll keep going until we find a spot where it's like all right. The difference between Isaac Newton living like when whenever the fuck he lived a right. long ass time ago, years ago versus the science that we're dealing with today. Like it's science today, but what woo woo do you see in the science of today? Uh, I that's what that's what, like I'm not trying to pick on him. You know, it's like but it's still theory. It's oh, still a theory. You know? Not only is it still a theory, it's still purely observational. Sure. It may be better observational, yeah. but it's still observational. Sure. You know. Now the question is, what the fuck is the observer? Yeah. What is, who is, what does that entail? How? Why? Um, yeah. Is perception relative? It's, it's is big. it an absolute yeah, thing? Yeah, sure. Um, Are we living inside out? Is it outside in? Are we just our brains? Then there's a theory once you of, once you it? question the observer itself, yeah. it opens a whole box of questions. It's a fucking fucking trap. No, it's not a trap. It's like a fuck. What's no rabbit hole? It is a rabbit hole, but there are. If you ask me, there are answers. No, no, I, at the end of I, that I, rabbit I'm sure. hole. I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure. Jesus. I think Rogan would be thinking like, this will lead to no absolute answers. It'll just keep going. Oh, it It'll will. Just keep questioning things. No, and, it will. It can. Which is why I was, it can one of the few things I was disappointed in with this interview. No, actually, no bad. It will because it will it will tell you. Oh, I don't know. That is a truth. Yeah. Uh, one of the few things I was disappointed in with this was that he didn't explain anything that is true for Asahabi. He just questioned all the other things that claim to be true. Uh, maybe, maybe in a way he did. But he didn't say directly. That's the thing, because. Like I could, I could hear him say, um, "I can't quote him." Uh, in regards to what is a fact and what isn't, you know, what is it? What is a truth? They did go into that. So he did, but he didn't. Like versus me just saying out or out, like. Uh, like I uh, think he. Yeah. Like green is my favorite color. All right. That's saying what is a truth as opposed to what is. Well, what does truth mean? I'm establishing what. Like me, yeah, yeah, yeah. here. Then there's without looking at it. They definitely went into knowing and believing. I was like, oh shit, they're actually doing yeah. this. You used a different word. You said knowledge and believing. Sure. So like you said in the Obviously beginning, knowing. like you said in the beginning, you established that you know these things are through like tools in a way that we have tools, whether they're physical or non-physical, like like math. And Etc. Like you know, rulers measuring. Yeah. We we have all these things now. It's like uh, I don't give a fuck. It's still a theory. Yeah. And as close as and as accurate as it possibly could be, it's still a theory. And there's the still only. Here's the the trick here because the only true, like truly in depth observation you can have is at the level of infinity. So it's like good luck. You're gonna be. You won't make it as far as being in this world, living and in, uh, inhaling and exhaling. Oh, and yeah? Being able to oh. explain it to everyone else. Well, I'll become a billionaire and then I'll drink the blood of little children and then we'll see who's around for longer. <laughs> that shit will keep me alive. They're going to kill me now. I'm happy. <laughs> it's don't, just don't, like, sui- don't suicide me. It's just like uh, the, the argument about the inch. Like, what is an inch? Let's say we it's, draw two lines here. It's relative to what we make it. Uh, yeah, let's say we draw two lines here, and we say, that's mm-hmm. an inch. The space between these two lines is an inch. And you say, well, how accurate do you know? Do you know I how accurate you are? I, then you zoom in. Uh, and you're like, okay, have we zoomed in. We have a better observation of it now. We have the right. tools to have a better observation right. to say this is an inch. And someone comes along like, well, what if you can look even closer? Mm-hmm. They look a little closer, like, all right, now we have a better observation yeah, it gets, of what we call it. Goes on, and it keeps going, and, and keeps going, and keeps going. Are those atoms? Then it's like, leave us alone! <laughs> they have mouths. 
Leave like, us alone! <laughs> yeah. Like, you made my wife cry. That, that, that fucking, what do you call it? That model you have over there of us. <laughs> oh, we're not fat. Yeah. And, and at some point, you're going to stop to say, man, I want to live life. <laughs> I don't want to just hear really? constantly zooming in and measuring. Well, it's just for some that's living. Yeah. Well, I would say when it's passed on, oh. that makes it that makes it enjoyable. Okay. Like, oh, I, I studied all this work and I get to see all the past. Sure. And all the history of this particular subject, yeah. and now I get to add on to it. Yeah. And someone else, someone else will take it from here. Right, let's, <laughs> let's go. Over here. Oh, the uh, biggest culprit? Yes. Uh, randomness. See, it's funny because I heard this conversation with uh, Sam Harris on randomness, which I love, by the way. He did a great job. Uh, I thought it was a great conversation. However, he was giving you, in my opinion, two contradictory ideas. He was telling you that the world is determined, but also there'll be random events. And I found out he was actually talking about determinism versus free will. Right. Yeah, so the idea being that you don't necessarily have free will, that everything about your decisions and what you're going to Mm. do is based on your life experiences, your genetics, all these variables that are essentially out of your control. So this idea of free will is an illusion, Mm. which is a really complex conversation. And I think you can see it in both ways. I I think you do have a certain amount of control over your decisions. And I think you are also shaped very much so by your past and your genetics and your interpretation of those events. Um, What are those interpretations of those events? Who's doing the interpreting? I think he's he's saying that there is free will, but there's also deterministic things. Which is interesting. Sure. Yeah. Like the whole like muscle and fibers stuff. thing, you know. I don't know. It just it makes sense. So. Yeah. As far as I can comp, as far as for me comprehending the the idea or the theory, you know, it makes I I, I can understand how that would apply to uh, what what could be. You know? Yeah. So, actually, I, w- I do want to throw this in there that. I think Farasavi's central point is that science, it doesn't give you everything when it comes to like truth and understanding well, things. It can, well, it can give you something, but it can't give you the truth. And I look at science as like a teammate of your other faculties. Sure. It's not, it's not the fucking leader. It's not. It, it can, it can help you. Lead, it can lead you to the truth as far as okay, I don't know this. That's that, that we established that. I don't know. I think of it as a teammate. Well, as an I'm eyes say, can I'm, lead you to. I'm saying. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying it can. It can lead you to something. It can't but give you. It, it can only lead you to something if you have the other faculties with you. Sure. I said it can. I didn't say. Otherwise, it you can't establish it as a truth. I, uh, okay, but I'm, I didn't say it will. I said it could. Oh, for sure. But it needs the other faculties. Sure. Which is basically saying one equals one, which isn't really saying much. But it is the truth, but it's uh, not really saying much. Yeah. What is one equal? Itself? Genius. <laughs> lead us. Lead us. Like, who are you? I'm me. That, you hear that? He said, yes, I said me. He said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 no. He's saying, he's saying give him money. He's saying I should, I should, I should, ah, I should be in charge of all the money. Give it to me. Kill him. He said, praise me. <laughs> That's actually interesting. It's like, why am I here? <laughs> he did it for our sins. <laughs> Build a temple. Actually, a great metaphor of one equals one is the same thing as saying infinity equals infinity. And it's also saying one equals infinity. All of that, all of that's being said at the same time. Hmm. If you take the number one, you can divide it infinite number of times. Thus, it well, equals infinite. It'd be, it'd be infinite. Thus, yeah. one itself is infinite. Yeah. But no one goes around saying that because they want. Oh, they don't want to get the, they don't, like just give me one fucking cheeseburger. Well, here's the thing. Like, no. You want infinite cheeseburgers? Yeah. I can take this one cheeseburger and split it up infinite number of times. That's what I do to him. It's like, what, what part is a cheeseburger yeah. and what part is not a cheeseburger? Says, or is it all one cheeseburger? says, close the door, James. It's like, this door? Yes. Close it. 
Oh, I can't close the door. <laughs> pull the door. Full. I can't really pull it. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> it's fun. You could do that with someone all the... It's, I, that's why he's like, knock it off, not today. I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah, so they're here a little more. It's like, well, get out of my room. Well, you own the room. You own this yeah. space around you. It's yours. Everything surrounding <laughs> us. Fisher's room was given to you. It was assigned to you. Now the prisoner says in his cell, get out of my cell, it's mine. You don't own the cell. What's going on here? <laughs> it's, your, it's my bed. Hmm, who says who? You own the bed, yeah. That's probably why that guy said semantics. I'm here, Even I'm, though I don't think that, I don't consider that semantics. Here, even though I'm being silly and there are, there are semantics are involved over there, there's when I when I'm being very specific into what is known, what's a truth, what's what's a belief. And what I was getting at is when these guys mesh the two and it becomes something and it becomes a fun it becomes very very similar, extremely similar to a fundamentalist uh, a fundamentalist in regards of religion. Yeah. It's like he even holy shit. Farasabi even says it, he says, Well it's based on faith. Yeah. That the pat that the future will Reflect what the past did. Yeah, it's pro- well, probability. Or faith. Well, sure. But pro- I wholly believe that it, this it, will it, happen. It goes with... It goes this with, happens. It's, it's almost hand in hand, you know, because it's... 99% of the time this happens, so we're going to say the most likely this will happen. And someone could say, yeah, I believe that. I, I believe. Yeah, I believe it to be um, the most probable. There you go. Rather than, it's the truth. 99, 99%. <laughs> 99%, yes. It's like, no, 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 no. And it might not even be that. No. Someone might go along saying, oh, actually, you, uh, you fucked up. That's where the, that's where all this culminates, right? Yeah. The gray area where you zoom in, you can see black and white everywhere. And also the one equal infinity. You can split one into an infinite number of pieces. And then the 99%. It's like, well, relatively, that looks very accurate. But if you zoom in to those little decimal points that you sort of swept aside to say 99%, you say, oh, wow, there's a huge difference between 99.00001% correct and 99.00002. Yeah, I said, I said beyond that, too. I mentioned that when I was, when I was having the, the, you call it the debate argument. I said it could be 99.999999999999% there's still that one little thought he's like you're, okay, you're using semantics and I'm like no this is crucial yeah. that, that's what separates it from a truth because you know? if you take that tiny decimal is there any chance it could be wrong yeah any chance yeah. any little fucking thing if you take that tiny decimal and you zoom into it yeah. now it becomes a giant canvas of error yeah it could be like what if this and that and not to mention I created this I created this thing. Yeah. Uh, Just like if you zoom out, it looks. It'll look more. In a way, yeah. In a way, it's like, oh, my my units of measurement are different than yours. And we're using the same. In a way, the same system. Yeah. And we're not. If you say every inch is the same, just zoom all the way back and say every <laughs> inch is the same fucking thing. Well, that can allow you to make buildings and shit like that. Yeah. Right. Without zooming into those. Tiny errors yeah, that are yeah, right. restricting on large errors. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Listen, we have better we have better microscopes and uh <laughs> Well you gotta start making better, better microscopes. Uh, listen. And then better, better, better microscopes. Yeah. And, uh, infinitely. Yeah, right. Until you become the thing itself. Yeah. You have to become an inch yourself. Yeah. In order to say this is an inch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, Apple has made a very, uh... <laughs> Not so the water. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Oh, why do you make those determinations? Who, who's, who's in your head pulling the gears? Like, what is... Question. What are you? I'm a hard determinist. Like, I'm a mm-hmm. very hard determinist. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm like a determinist extremist. Mm-hmm. So, but you believe in free will. I also believe in free will, which yeah, is which me is too. which is tricky. Yeah, which is tricky. But I think that's it, 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 it's true. Upon it's true. further examination, I think that's there's there is something mm-hmm. that allows people to. I mean, what what takes a guy who's five hundred pounds and all of a sudden he goes on a keto diet 
and starts running and starts walking and then he he sends you a picture on Twitter. I lost 179 pounds in six months. Like holy shit. How the fuck did you do that? <laughs> like that guy has some fucking will, man. To but, say that that's his whole life and his his life experiences and his genetics, it's like, yes, I could see what you're saying. I could see that he he had enough because of his life experiences and that it led to him making this mm-hmm. change. But this is hourly physical challenging tasks. That takes will. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. And rather than, I I could be the, I could be a great athlete. Uh, uh, but, but hold on, then there's the. I think he's sort of saying that. I'm, I'm not. I'm sort not. Sort of. You're just using no, external I, I'm examples. Saying, oh, I thought you were going to go back to like how uh, you, you you believed through uh, past experiences that uh, he believes something like challenging, you know, is like some yes. sort of physical. Yeah, that too. We'll just call that conditioning. Maybe. People we'll just call it conditioning. It's like being hurt, you know, and not being able to move and just thinking about shit. I was like. Yes, I just I didn't lift anything, technically. <laughs> it's like <laughs> But he does, he does mention willpower. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So. I agree with you. Yeah. Will, and that, that goes into anything. You know. Might even be a movie symbol. William. Will Smith, Bad Boys. We don't speak of William the Bloody here. What's Will? What's William without the Will? Liam? (gasps) (laughs) I'm just kidding, it means nothing. Insider TV dog. (laughs) What's Will without the Liam? (laughs) You're my granddaddy. There's a tremendous amount of Will involved in that. And to Mm -hmm. deny that seems like you're denying the spirit of human beings. Well, let's look at it this way, okay, real quick. Let's look at it. Okay, let's add a couple of this piece of paper. And I'm going to catapult it. Okay. And it landed there. Right. And now I'm going to reset the entire universe. I'm going to reset every molecule of air, every fiber in this paper. You're going to be in the exact same spot. The whole universe has been reset. And I fired it again. Is it going to land exactly where it landed the first time? Or is it going to land somewhere else? I've reset the universe. I, the Earth was... The Earth, every molecule of uh, matter in the every 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 particle of matter in the universe has been reset, but with the same amount of force. Distorting reality. What, what do you think to that question? I want to hear it again. Well, you, you can just give me your best opinion on it. No, I want to hear the question. Yeah. Seems like you're denying the spirit of human beings. Well, let's look at it this way, okay, real okay. quick. Let's look at it. Okay, let's add a couple of this piece of paper. And I'm going to catapult it. Okay. And it landed there. Right. And now I'm going to reset the entire universe. I'm going to reset every molecule of air, every fiber in this paper. You're going to be in the exact same spot. The whole universe has been reset. And I fired it again. Is it going to land exactly where it landed the first time? Hmm. That is interesting. I, I, I do remember him saying that, just I want to be clear. Uh, I love questions like that. That's, well, why, yeah. I, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> well, he's, he's turning, he's basically saying he's resetting everything. Man, everything's going back to exactly... Like turning back the clock. Yeah. The exact same... Uh, it's not going back in time. Mm-hmm. It's just repeating the same event again. Oh. With all the same factors. Right. The fucking air... He was outside wind speed, okay. gravity. He's the same. Right. Then that doesn't stop a meteor coming down, you know, hurling down, destroying their house. And now it's the same exact physical oh. atmosphere. Okay. My bad. So if there wasn't a meteor coming down before, there isn't one now. Will that paper land in the same exact spot again? <laughs> it's interesting. What do you think? Oh, I'm not sure. Mm. It's a lot simpler than you think. Really? Oh. It'll land in the same spot. Okay. Because none of the fact, none of the physical oh. factors change. That means I, uh, yeah. Okay. That's a physical action. So I was right, destroying reality here. That's to say isolating that, reality. Yeah. To say that this, like, to say that I have, a, I have a bowling ball in my hand and I drop it, and it will land on the ground, and I do it. 
after I do it, I state it. If I do it again, for the same uh, circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. The now same I'm exact distorting reality here. Versus where I say, well, well I am. Too. Yes, you are, but I think he's doing it as a thought experiment. I'm as sure. In, for sure. As in logically, yes. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean is, uh, uh, as opposed to if I just say, if I have this bowling ball, I haven't dropped it yet. If I drop it, it will hit the ground. That's different. Yeah. Unless it came after you said... No, no, no. I'm, I, I, I said before. I haven't dropped it yet. Okay. Then, yeah. yeah. Right. Also, but... I'm getting smarter. I would ask. Yeah. I would ask, well, what would change, if anything? What could possibly change there if all the physical factors are exactly the same? Mm. Applies the same force throwing the little piece of paper in. Does anything change? The observer, the observation. I just said it without words. But he also goes into another theory. He also goes into another theory which steals my cheese. Don't say it. <laughs> steals my someone out there. Be- someone out there is like, <sighs> I'm keeping tabs on you. I'm gonna be billionaire. <laughs> You stole my can you be born gay argument. Someone's gonna say, Welcome to the Chappelle Show. Back in action. We got some new skits for you. It's like, look, I'll kill you for this. <laughs> you stole my skit. I don't even say it's a skit either. I don't even know what it is. My sketch, my ideas. <laughs> it's some weird thing. You raped my ideas. Some weird thing that I'm like, how come these genius artists like haven't come up with this yet? Artists? Yeah. Guys who make films and all Music? that shit. Oh. I'm like, how do you guys not think of this? Uh, granted, it's a little complicated idea that, and you need a... It comes... A complete, 100% grounded understanding of who you are as a being. Well, we could just say this. There are people that are artists. But apparently the theory's already out there. Well, there are. You know, but... You could just say that there's artists out there, then there's those who are, have the title of it. Yeah. But they are in a way. It's not the way they think. You know? It's like, oh, it's there. You just missed it. You had no idea you did it. You did it by accident. <laughs> then there's the ones, I'm purposely placing this here. And I'm placing this, everything surrounding it. That way, it can lead you towards right here. Sandy Hook. Dark Knight Rises. I'm not talking about it. Did you see that? What? Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. Did you see the Sandy Hook? Before Sandy Hook happened? (laughs) Did you? (laughs) When uh, Gordon like rolls out a map, like we gotta get to this location. He's over here, but right here you can see the word Sandy Hook right there on the map. That sparked, that sparked some conspiracy. I heard of it. Uh, pretty sure I heard of it. But the point is... Okay. This is actually a pretty good example. When he brings up the... Uh, you guys aren't playing the video. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> the part when he brings up... Which we, I guess we'd go in to some... Go in at, at uh, some other time. The part where he brings up the... What's he called? Like a dual train theory or something? Mm -hmm. To where consciousness and your deterministic parts, like your physical things, Mm -hmm. like how matter works and all that, they just happen, consciousness just happens to choose the same thing as what the way matter is going. So when, let's say, you biologically like, oh, that girl's hot. Or, uh, yeah. actually, or let's say this, let's say, I'm heterosexual, I find women attractive. Right. Your consciousness at the same time is saying, I'm heterosexual, I'm attracted to women. Mm-hmm. So there's no like split there to say, mm-hmm. well, co- my consciousness is saying this, and mm-hmm. my body's saying this. They just happen to be choosing the same thing at the same time. Right. Which is how I go into 
can you be born gay thing. It's like, yes, no, it's both. Well, yeah. You're creating it, but that's also who you are at it's the like, same time. I was born this way. Then you, ha- then you, then you hop up. This is perfect, by the way. I was born this way. Then you like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, you could say, yes and no. <laughs> Kick off the stage. Boom. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot my point. Shawn Michaels super kick. <laughs> <laughs> They're both going a certain way. You know? Heterosexual. Fuck. Consciousness. You know? I think I was going about. I was using that reference to go back to. Uh, fuck. It's gone. <sighs> Aw. It's like, I love you, honey. Too. Let's go to the room. Oh, wait. See, we have oh. this thing where it records everything. Yeah. So at some later time, I can sure. kind of bring this back up. It's, it's like a man and woman, like, you know, honeymoon, and it's... Oh, I lost it. Uh. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> I'm leaving you. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I found it again. All right. Or is it going to land somewhere else? I've reset the universe. I, the Earth was the Earth. Every molecule of uh, matter in the every 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 particle of matter in the universe has been reset but with the same amount of force. Everything is identical. I would assume if the same amount of space and the same amount of air, you would land the same spot, I, infinitely precisely. I don't know. Well, I've reset everything perfectly. If, if, if infinitely, precisely, you throw it the exact, the exact same way and it lands in the exact same dirt with the exact same mm-hmm, resistance, mm-hmm. it's the I same would, thing. I would assume it's okay. infinitely, precisely going to land in the same spot. If random... But what changes? It turns into the metaphor of Groundhog's Day, where the day is the same repeatedly over and over and over. Even the force of nature is yeah. the same. A person. But something else can change. Yeah. Or does change. It does change, 100%. Well, it would. You're, you're experiencing it again. Yeah. You're no longer... I've never done this before. It's like, oh, I've done this. This is the hundredth time. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. Right. This is a force at work like, in nature. Mm-hmm. Hello. Why did not it factor oh. itself into our little experiment here? Okay, that was bad. experiments are possible. But that's irrelevant. It's a thought experiment. But it's not a thought it's not experiment. Impo- it's not you're recreating it's not the logically whole universe. Imp- right, but it's not logically impossible. Right. It's, well, it's in that case, though, with the variables that you presented, yes. Okay. You, but where's randomness? Where's this force? There's no randomness if you're recreating the entire Earth in a, in a very duplicatable way. That's not mm-hmm. randomness at all. What is random? That's Rand- the thing. There is no randomness. Right. Randomness is when a human being can no longer compute all of the factors. And he, we use an expression called randomness, meaning... Okay, I rolled this dice and landed on, on seven randomly. Why? Because I couldn't compute all the mm-hmm. variables. So, okay, so, so, so randomness is kind of a, it's, a, it's an illusion we project onto the world. So Laplace, one of the greatest uh, physicists in history, okay, uh, Simon Laplace, he says, look, look at a billiard ball table. Okay, if you tell me which way you're gonna break the billiard balls, if you tell me what velocity and what angle you're gonna hit the, the, the cue ball, mm-hmm. I can tell you where every single ball is gonna be on the pool table. That's what Laplace says, okay? He's a, he's a phenomenal thinker. And he says, why? Because I'm gonna take that table, I'm gonna turn it into a math. I'm gonna take the weight of the ball, the friction of the table, the, the density of the bands, the, 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 the gravity of the, mm-hmm. the earth, excuse me. I'm gonna take all those variables. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put them up on this board here. All I need to know is how hard you're gonna hit the ball. And I'll tell you precisely where every ball is gonna land. Now somebody who doesn't know mathematics or geometry is gonna look at that table when he sees the break. To him it's gonna seem random. But randomness is really a reflection of his ignorance. He's not able to compute all this information. That's why Laplace says, to God, the world is not random. To somebody who has information, the world is not random. That's why he says, it's very important, that's why, that's why we're so determinist, because we believe that what's happening right now is a byproduct of the past. The past caused this happening right now. The past was out of your control. If I reset the universe and let it play all over again, a- identical circumstance, you would drink that exact same amount of coffee you have today. You would have made the same. You would have married the same woman. You would have had the same kids. You would have the same T-shirt on right now. You would have this, the mic at the same distance. Everything would be reset. So when we look at the world through 
episode, he says something very interesting, something I've heard of years ago, but through a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I forgot the guy's name, but he talks about this moment and these moments in film that he calls the God moment. That's when you understand everything going on in the story. That's what that's what we get to be when we watch movies. Yeah, we're in that God moment where we understand everything. There's no hidden mystery to right. us. No, you're right. Yeah. You can hear we're the character's getting... voice thinking to himself. You can, I know what this scenario is going on over the, here. Especially when you write the story. So, especially when you're giving the story. you the meaning. Yes. Sort of. Well, how you need the, the director. I'm, yeah, I'm giving meaning. I put it in here. I'm giving mm-hmm. it to you. I'm giving you the character, their yeah. motives. Yeah, it's all there. Who they are. Yeah. And I can, I can write that there's no self or soul existent yeah. in, in my movie. Yeah. And then that's just the way it is. Yeah. He's just a basically a, a so biological a, robot walking around. He wanted. To, uh, he's a lawyer, politician, and a loving father <laughs> of two. If that was in, they would imply it, thus giving you the God advantage. I, I know he's new. <laughs> I always knew it. Yes. Build for the me eyes eyes. <laughs> They say the causal line is complete. See, he did it. The causal line is complete, meaning where is this space for randomness or free will? It, we, we don't factor it in. The only time we do factor it in is when we look at ourselves inwardly. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the world objectively as a third person, so th- there's two views. There's the internal view, first person experience. We don't believe rather, we don't believe in, in, in uh, determinism. We we have free will. That's the first person experience. Third person experience. I'm studying Joe. All I see in Joe is billiard balls. So when you have a thought, it's all billiard balls hitting one another. And if I had a, an infinitely precise calculator, according to Laplace, I could tell you where you're gonna be five years from now, what you're gonna be doing. Why? Because I've seen one billiard ball hit another. It's just take that pool table experiment and make it the greatest pool game in history. Mm. There are countless atoms. There are countless billiard balls striking <laughs> one another. Somebody can calculate the world of physics and tell you where your hand's going to be. Laplace says, I'm going to tell you where your hand's going to be in five years from now. But you don't know my... Per- That's a faulty uh, theory, but I understand what he's trying to say. He's just well, putting it's, the it's, theory it's very, out there. It's very interesting. It's putting the theory out there. Yeah. But it is faulty because of your conscience, your consciousness. Unless you're a soulless beast. <laughs> As in, like, what happens when that conscious train wants to separate mm-hmm. from the physical reality? It's like, wait, that, no, come back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Oh, you're, you're a fat slob, you'll never do anything. And Kostas is like, I'm going to fucking show you. I don't know, you forget. It's, it's two cars. And then, yeah. and hold on, yeah. then it's like, all right, I'm going to start lifting, working out, blah, blah, blah. And they start realigning again to where you can't, <laughs> which can be a problem if you don't understand that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right from me. If you're not looking at that going on, yeah. you can end up falling back asleep. Where it's like, you're not, you're not woke, bro. Like, dude, where'd that will and determination go? You're not woke. Made it to the top of the mountain, man. I did it. It's over. That's it. Oh, did you hear, Did you see that mountain over there? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Is that Bill? What the fuck? Dude, you're still at the base of the mountain, man. Did he get to the top of the Bill's there? Yeah. You're going to, there's another mountain, fuck. Are you going, Bill? <laughs> no, I realized there, uh, there is no top of the mountain. It's like, <laughs> I didn't hear that. I want him going. <laughs> there it is. Subjective, what I meant, but. Personal choices I'm gonna make, that's irrelevant. The physical mountain. That's irrelevant, he'll tell you that's irrelevant. Why? Because he sees the billiard balls moving inside your mind, so to speak. Mm. Now, Leibniz reconciled the two. Because, see, for instance, when, I, when I'm living in the first person, this is my intuition. I'm like, hey, I grabbed that cof- cup of coffee. I had this internal experience that's outside of physics. So Leibniz gave a great example. He said, look, 
If I was really, really tiny and I'd walk around your mind, I would see blood flow, I would see neurons firing, I would see all sorts of biological uh, interactions. But I wouldn't see anything of consciousness. I wouldn't see your thoughts, I wouldn't see you thinking about your wife, uh, hearing your child's voice, uh, thinking about what you want to have for dinner, I wouldn't see any of that. I would just see billiard balls hitting one another. However, now that I'm having this first person experience, there's something we call intuition, this first person experience itself, you're having this spiritual type of transcendent experience. What it's like to have a thought, what it's like to be me. So for instance, I see that cup of coffee, I desire the cup of coffee and I drink it. Science has nothing, has no information about my conscious experience, my intuitive experience. It, what makes science you is not absolutely, not about telling me everything about the universe. It can only tell thinker. me about the billiard balls. It can only go so far. At that point, it has to stop. Because it doesn't have, we don't, the, our senses cannot sense the conscious experience that we're having. The conscious experience is only known intuitively. So first person experience. So Leibniz says this, he says, look, you look at the world, when you study the world, we're all seeing billiard balls hitting one another. Nobody argues about that. However, our intuition is telling us that's all untrue. We have the, we have the ability to move our own hand, desire something, grab something, eat something, consume something, make a choice. And he says, how are the two, how could they coexist? Because remember, in, in reason, for me to accept something as logically true, I have to eliminate every other possibility. So he found one possibility, one possibility that till today it's, it's never been refuted. He says, he, he calls it the, the twin trains. So picture two trains, okay? They're going Traffic. up and down, side by side, traveling at six speed. They look like they're connected to one another, but they're not. They're just synchronized. Every time one goes left, the other one goes left. One goes up, one goes down. And so when I, when, when Leibniz tells you, he says, look, when you reach for that cup of coffee, the universe had already decided millions of billions of years ago that that was gonna happen. Your intuitive sense just coincides with it perfectly. And he said, that's what he calls the twin trains theory, the, the correlation theory, that. That's what I was basically talking about with the can you be born gay thing. It's, okay, can you be born gay? It's like yes and no. Yeah. As in, yes, or uh, no as in you create yourself to be Gay. Yeah, you're born gay. Mm -hmm. No, as in, you create yourself to be born gay. But you create yourself to be born gay because you're already gay. Yeah. It's, it's saying one equals one. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it, when you flesh it out, it's a very interesting concept. Yeah, it is. So, I'm probably going to stop the video here. Yeah. Let's see what time stamp we're at. Uh, say seven something, yeah. seventeen something. So, anything from this first snippet? Oh, I found out you're gay, and uh, I know everyone fuck. knows now. Everyone knows. Chatty Pat and your mom's. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Uh, chatty. Yo, I'm not dry snitching. Oh, I'm a dry snitch, but I'm not a snitch. You know what I mean? Uh, what did I get? Yeah. Hmm. It's basically what we've been talking about for the past two days. Yeah, this is... It's like, this is like a lot of what our channel does. Yeah. We've been talking about this for a while when it comes to the scientists and their... Mm -hmm. uh, dogmatic... Some. Oh yeah, not all of them, obviously, but these, I call what I call them, like, pop scientists, or pop intellectuals. Mm. Like who? Sam Harris, <gasps> Steven Pinker, <gasps> some of these YouTube channel guys, <laughs> even a little Jordan Peterson, <gasps> to some degree. Not as much him, but definitely those other guys. And they talk about it in the fucking thing. When they're uh, debating truth, like what is the truth? Not not what is the truth, but what is what does the truth mean? Mm -hmm. Like, let's define the truth. 
I'm like, dude, this is a five minute conversation. <laughs> but you turned it into like a two part, two hours each. With my legs folded on a chair with a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's like, I mean, we can establish what it is. Yeah. It's very easy. I think that's what they're doing. Maybe. If they're trying to say, like, what is true, mm-hmm. in my opinion, that'd be. Uh, that would probably take a long time to explain it to someone who didn't already look at this stuff. Uh, Not really. I think it would take time because you'd have to explain it. It, it, would, it would depend. You'd have to explain your argument. Well, that's it. That's it. Uh, I wonder if Rogan will discard this. Oh. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, Or he'll... I hope he looks deeper into it, man. Yeah, here. Yeah. Hold he this. He used all the names. <laughs> hold this. All right, so hold it right there. It's like, I'm going to keep this and take it with me wherever I go. <laughs> and, uh, and, and next, pro- time, next, next time Harris is on, or probably. It's like, it's a, it's a fact. He's like, actually. <laughs> See, for us, he, he did it in a better way for Rogan to understand Mm because he named all the names and all that shit me personally I didn't get them from these guys so I got them from observation and they just happen to correlate with whoever like oh I'm this way let's see if someone else is that way too or thinks or has had this idea or whatever so that's why you'll steal their kid and uh, yes answer my question (laughs) it will live so, but he does, he lists off the names and shit. He does, he's not just saying it to say it. Yeah. Like, sort of like the Candace Owens fucking thing when we're talking about climate change. Mm-hmm. If you take her out of that chair and insert James Corbett, mm-hmm. you have a different conversation going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Something different happens. Yeah. To where he's like, this, Jamie pulled us up and blah, blah, blah. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. I brought my sources. <laughs> See, he would do the Jones thing where he goes like, listen, and then puts the paper down like never to be touched ever again. Yeah. Versus. Corbett would be fucking perfect on road. Yes, he, he would. He's an English teacher or he was an English teacher or something like that. Mm, to where I, I he, under, he can throw these words out to where everyone's like, mm, he's smart. I must listen now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, Be smart, I listen. It's like, yo, what's up, bro? Yes, I's an idiot. <laughs> Which is why it's grandpa mode. Listen, son. You're confused. You don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Which is why it's so cool to hear Farah Sahabi fucking let, explain all those things using like, like good terminology. Yeah. He flubbed up it with like, certain things, but they're mm-hmm. like it, nothing. I, I thought he did okay. No, he does a great job, man. And he says all the names and he brings the terminology mm-hmm. to where Rogan, there's no wiggle room from the runaway. Or <laughs> Damn. Not runaway, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'll just word my way out of this argument. You're running right into a but corner. Listen, this doesn't lead anywhere. You can't do that when he's like, Bertrand Russell, uh, Descartes, the uh, fucking, what's his name? Newton, Einstein. There's no like wiggle wiggle room to just get out of there and say this is gonna lead nowhere, man. I'll stop you right here. This isn't, this isn't going anywhere. I hate it when he does that. You can't do that there. Mm. So Eddie Bravo takes some uh, lessons from that. So uh, if you want to bring up controversial That's ideas, right. the nuke video. If you want to bring up controversial ideas, find some famous intellectual guy. So that Rogan will actually listen to you. <laughs> or infamous. Hmm. Alright guys. Hit that subscribe button and... Report us. Don't do that. Do it. <laughs>